Good afternoon. My name is Ed O'Callaghan, and I am the Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General uh, in the Justice Department's National Security Division. Uh, in my capacity as Principal Deputy, I assist the Acting Assistant Attorney General in the supervision of the 350 dedicated investigators and prosecutors who carry out the Department's highest priority, protecting the United States from threats to our national security. I've been with the National Security Division since November of last year. Uh, previously, from 1999 to 2008, I was an Assistant United States Attorney in the Southern District of New York. Uh, from 2005 to 2008, I was co-chief of the Terrorism and National Security Unit uh, in the Southern District of New York. Uh, and some of the cases I worked on, uh, of course, during that time included the investigation um, uh, into the 9-11 attacks uh, that occurred uh, while I was an Assistant United States Attorney in the Organized Crime and Terrorism Unit of the Southern District of New York. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today about yesterday's release of the Department of Justice and Department of Homeland Security Section 11 report. The report, titled after Section 11 of President Trump's Executive Order 13780, protecting the nation from terrorist entry into the United States, was a collaborative effort between the DOJ and DHS to respond to EO 13780's directive to provide information to the American people regarding the number of foreign nationals charged with or convicted of terrorism-related offenses or removed from the United States based on terrorism-related or other national security reasons. The Justice Department's National Security Division maintains a list of individuals convicted of international terrorism-related charges in U.S. federal courts between September 11, 2001 and December 31st of 2016. As indicated in the report, as of December 31st of 2016, there are 549 individuals on that list of convictions of terrorism, international terrorism-related offenses. A subsequent DHS analysis of those 549 individuals convicted of international terrorism-related offenses determined that approximately 73%, or 402, of these 549 individuals were foreign-born. A further breakdown of the U.S. citizenship status of these individuals at the time of their respective convictions shows that 254 were not United States citizens, 148 were foreign-born, naturalized, and received U.S. citizenship, and 147 were citizens, U.S. citizens by birth. I'll point out that one of the cases that's highlighted in the Section 11 report refers to um, a defendant uh, who we convicted in the Southern District of New York named Uzair Paracha. Uh, Mr. Paracha uh, came into the United States, I believe, in 1980 um, as a family member of a legal permanent resident. Uh, Mr. Paracha was ultimately convicted of providing material support to al-Qaeda. Uh, it's a case that I supervised when I was chief of the terrorism unit in the Southern District of New York. Uh, the evidence in that trial showed uh, that Mr. Paracha attempted to assist other individuals who were affiliated with al-Qaeda uh, to try to uh, enter the United States based on false statements in immigration documents. And in fact, Paracha assisted and uh, took on the persona of one of the individuals who he's, he was attempting to try to get back into the United States uh, to commit terrorist acts here. Uh, the individual statements provided by that individual uh, demonstrated that he was attempting to come back into the United States uh, to commit uh, attacks on gas stations in New York, my hometown. Um, and uh, uh, by the fact that we were able to prosecute Paracha, um, it stopped that uh, attempt uh, to engage in additional terrorist attacks here in the United States. Additional items included in your report um, demonstrate that the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement uh, provided information that shows that there have been approximately 1,716 removals of aliens since September 11, 2001, because of national security concerns, a designation that is determined by uh, ICE within the Department of Homeland Security. Um, obviously, there are certain times where, uh, although there are national security concerns about foreign-born individuals who are in the United States, uh, a federal prosecution for one reason or another um, is, is not the, the suitable uh, way to go about dealing with the threat uh, posed by that individual. So the immigration authorities have other tools at their disposal, one of them being the removal tool, uh, which is cited by ICE in the Section 11 report. 
Uh, it is the case that the threats to our national security are not showing any signs of relenting. In fiscal year 2017 alone, uh, DHS encountered 2,554 individuals on terrorist watch lists, formerly known as the F FBI's terrorist screening database. Uh, those individuals were, of course, attempting to get into the United States. Additional important statistics provided by DHS and documented in the report include the fact that between October 1st, 2011 and September 30th, 2017, a total of 355,345 non-citizen offenders were administratively arrested uh, after previously being convicted of an aggravated felony or two or more crimes, each punishable, punishable by more than one year, a regular felony. During that same time period, according to DHS, 372,098 non-citizen offenders were removed from the United States after conviction of an aggravated felony or two or more felonies. And between fiscal year 2010 and fiscal year 2017, Customs and Border Protection, CBP, identified and prevented the boarding of 73,261 foreign travelers on flights destined from the United States who may have presented an immigration or security risk. In a statement yesterday about the report, Attorney General Sessions indicated that there are currently thousands of terrorism-related investigations into thousands of people in the United States, including hundreds of people who came here as refugees. In addition, citing surveys previously commissioned by DOJ components, the report noted that there are an estimated 23 to 27 honor killings every year in the United States, and that there are an estimated approximately half a million women and girls in the United States at risk of undergoing the abhorrent practice of female genital mutilation. In October of last year, the Trump administration laid out a series of immigration policy objectives to ensure safe and lawful admission to the United States, defend the safety and security of our country, and protect American workers and taxpayers. There are three pillars to this immigration policy. Border security, immigration enforcement, and a merit-based immigration system. From the cases I have worked on, I know that foreign terrorist organizations, transnational criminal organizations, and other individuals and entities that wish to harm the United States undoubtedly seek to exploit weaknesses in our immigration system when it benefits them in accomplishing their unlawful schemes. President Trump's immigration policy is designed to serve the interests of national security. Enhanced vetting and screening and continuing screening promote the discovery of information that would help immigration and law enforcement authorities identify foreigners who may pose national security threats to the American people. Rather than basing admission decisions on programs that lack accountability, like diversity visa lotteries and extended family chain migration, adopting a merit-based system rewards skills and qualities that include, but are not limited to, education, English language proficiency or fluency, and or job skills. As a prosecutor tasked with protecting our nation's security, I know some of our cases have involved exploitation of vulnerabilities in our current immigration system. The Attorney General is committed to restoring law and order in our immigration system so that we can address and work to eliminate the vulnerabilities that can be exploited by those seeking to undermine our public safety. Those are my brief remarks. I'm happy to take some questions. Sir, in the middle. Uh, thank you. Uh, do you find it alarming that more than 25 percent of people convicted of terror international terrorism-related charges were natural-born U.S. citizens, and what is the administration doing to address that issue? So the Department of Justice's um, enforcement uh, of the international terrorism laws are focused on the conduct uh, of that is the, found to be committed by individuals, no matter, you know, where they're born. Um, the, the statistics that you have for the first time uh, compiled in this way in response to uh, the, uh, the executive order and directives therein demonstrate that uh, the international terrorism offenses that uh, we have prosecuted in the National Security Division and achieved convictions on, that there's 73 percent of foreign born. We're going to prosecute <laughs> anyone that we can make cases against uh, that are posing threats to the national security of the United States. The statistics that are brought before you in the Section 11 report respond directly to the directive in the executive order about international terrorism offenses, and now those are the statistics that my division, the National Security Division, keep. Mr. Cullen. Sir, in the middle. Sir, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, my question is. Okay. Uh, thank you. You're next. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Very simply this, has there been any change in the administration's stated policy about using Guantanamo in dealing with international terrorists? Mm -hmm. no. um, I'm not aware of any change in, in the administration's um, um, uh, stated uh, use of the Guantanamo. Um, um, the administration is committed uh, to enforcing our terrorism laws and any law that we can against anyone who will uh, present harm or threats to the United States. There are um, considerations as to how any potential case uh, may be um, addressed so that any threat that is posed by any individual is, is neutralized. Um, I, the administration and Attorney General Sessions are committed to consider all options uh, as to how we can neutralize any threats posed by anyone uh, that may fall into a, a terrorism category. So Guantanamo is still going to be around for a while and there's no plans to close it at all? I, I'm not aware of any administration plans with respect to Guantanamo. I can tell you it's still around. Sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm hoping you can uh, explain some of your uh, logic here a little further because you talked about the immigration system and reforming the immigration system to protect Americans <coughs> in, in the United States, but a lot of the crimes that you're using as examples to justify uh, changing the immigration system are crimes that were you know, attempted crimes or would have taken place outside the United States, people wanting to travel outside the United States to fight, uh, providing support to fighters outside the United States. And I understand there's a, a nexus there with uh, U.S. forces in, in those regions, but the, if the point is to reform the immigration system to protect Americans, can you provide more information, more statistics that show doing so would have prevented people from coming in who committed more crimes inside the United States? Do you have maybe better examples that fit what you're trying to say? So the, the, a few points to that. One is this is the first iteration of, of this report in response to the executive order's directives. And we, in working together with DHS, certainly expect to have more statistics uh, and address some of the issues we weren't able to address in this initial report in, in future uh, iterations of, of this report. Uh, I, in, in terms of the cases that are reported, um, I mean, if you do look at the cases, um, some of which are included in the Section 11 report, um, there are certainly cases uh, that relate to conduct uh, that has been committed in the United States, um, conduct that um, is in support of, for instance, al-Qaeda or ISIS. So there are plenty of examples uh, of, of conduct that was actually committed in the United States, which would, in, in the way that we define it, uh, qualify as an international terrorism investigation because it relates to a foreign terrorist organization or uh, terrorism conduct. So secondly, I mean thirdly I would say, um, of course we're trying to prevent um, through any way we can, and the administration of course supports us, we're trying to prevent terrorist attacks. Um, and so the most successful prosecution that I've ever been involved with um, are ones where we actually are able to stop it at a conspiratorial stage. Uh, so that there are individuals who clearly through their conduct and their activity and, and what they're saying um, are agreeing to commit a terrorist act in furtherance of the goals of a foreign terrorist organization. But we, in, in conjunction with our law enforcement partners, are able to prevent it, convict them, and then they'll, they'll be included in our international terrorism offenses. Sir, I'm just trying to figure out, and, and maybe I'm not understanding this, how, uh, how preventing uh, people from coming in uh, who were conspiring, for instance, to go fight in, in Syria would have protected people in the United States. These are international terrorism crimes, and they weren't all, uh, they weren't all you know, planning attacks in the United States. They were planning things overseas. And you want to reform the immigration system, and it seems like the focus there should be on things that people did in the United States to people in the United States. Okay. So the, the, the administration um, immigration um, or reforms focus on uh, getting more information, um, uh, enhanced screening, enhanced vetting, more information, more agents, more officers asking more questions, more prosecutors uh, uh, prosecuting more cases. All of that uh, in conjunction with all the other national security efforts uh, by the administration um, will lead to um, uh, a, a, a safer 
um, uh, a safer United States. Um, I firmly believe that. Um, and um, I know that the fact that there are individuals here in the United States that are willing to, um, in, in support of, um, in support of uh, ISIS-related um, philosophies, uh, engage in and talk about engaging in committing acts here in the United States that we're able to prevent, I think that that makes the American people safer, and I know the Trump administration does. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Given that the discussion today is focused on national security, which is your area, I'd like to ask about national security as it relates to the arrest recently of that ex-CIA agent, Mr. Lee. Can you talk about the significance of that arrest and why action was not taken against him sooner? Um, so that, that I, I, I will say that that, uh, that is a very important arrest, um, as demonstrated in, in the complaint um, that was unsealed related to that case, um, that former CIA officer retained classified information. Um, as that case uh, uh, proceeds through the courts, um, I would expect that more information about the conduct um, that underlies those charges in the complaint will come out. Uh, but as of now, um, I'm, I'm just that, that case was investigated before I, I came to the National Security Division. Um, uh, it's an important case. It, it goes to um, illegal retention of classified information, and so he's going to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. One more on the report. One last sure. point. Um, yesterday, when the when the report was released, the White House put out a fact sheet that said it found that approximately three out of four uh, individuals convicted of international terrorism-related charges in the time period studied are foreign-born individuals who entered the United States through our immigration system. My understanding was that this, that those numbers that you cited to us included people who had been extradited here to face trial, which is to say they didn't enter through our immigration system. So my question is, is that correct? And if so, how many of the three quarters were actually immigrants? So the, 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 the data that is included um, focuses on foreign-born individuals who were, well, it's, it's all the international terrorism offenses. And just so you're clear, the international terrorism offenses is something that is categorized by the National Security Division based on specific provisions of the United States Attorney's Manual. I won't get into too many details, but there are two categories of offenses, Category 1 offenses that list uh, code, uh, sections of the, of the Federal Criminal Code that are then in and of themselves labeled international terrorism offenses. Then there are Category 2 offenses that are not, that do not qualify as Category 1 offenses, um, but those offenses are committed and individuals are convicted of those offenses like false statements or obstruction of justice that are committed in the course of an international terrorism investigation. And so those are the ones uh, that are reported in the 549. Um, some of which include foreign-born, some of which include foreign-born, but naturalized U.S. citizens, and some that include U.S. citizens. There is, un undoubtedly, because I've been involved in a lot of the cases, a um, uh, certain number of those foreign-born individuals um, who have been um, brought into the United States by extradition or otherwise to face charges. Um, but the underlying Im important fact about those cases is that we were able to prove that those individuals committed terrorism offenses against the United States, uh, and are now serving either life sentences or very long sentences um, that will neutralize their threat to the United States going forward, because we were able to convict them um, uh, under an international terrorism statute here in the United States. Thank you all.